Hello viewers, welcome to Top Notch Online TV. With you today is me, teacher Emis Njabani from Alliance Girls High School, a teacher of English, an author, an examiner. Uh, and with me, I have our lovely teacher Rispa, uh, a teacher from uh, PCA, Kikuyu High School, a teacher of English, uh, a renowned author, as well as uh, an examiner. So today, uh, we are going to look at the short stories, a silent song and other short stories. We are going to look at our first story, A Man of Awesome Powers. So uh, I'll give this chance to our lovely teacher, Rispa, to tell us uh, something about the short story and Man of Awesome Powers. Thank you for joining us, viewers. Today, in place, we are using a silent song. We are tackling the short stories. And when you're looking at the short stories, we usually, a short story usually deals with uh, not very many things. The scope of the discussion is not really dwelt on. Uh, looking at a man of awesome powers, I'll start by saying the story comes from Egypt. The author is by the name of Naguib Mafuz, and he tells the story about a man of awesome powers. What is this story about? We are going to look at the plot analysis. A man of awesome powers tells the story of Taib al-Mahdi. Taib al-Mahdi is a man who, who has just retired. The man seems to have it going well for him. Looking at the things that he has achieved, the man has a, ge a generous health insurance, that is one. Another thing the man has, he is living is in his own apartment after having been rewarded for working many years abroad. Further than that, he has adequate pension. And for any parent, it looks like an achievement when your children have been settled in their own homes, where we are seeing that the daughters of Taib al-Mahdi, the four of them are all married. Now that the man has retired, how does he spend his time? The man spends his time watching television, as well as listening to religious programs uh, based on the Quran. He looks like a man who is religious. Then one day, uh, and, uh, as, uh, as uh, Al-Mahdi is looking at his life, he feels that I have really achieved, I've lived a righteous life. And one day as uh, Al-Mahdi is sleeping, we are seeing that he encounters a dream. In his dream, uh, he dreams that a person has given him an awesome power, a power whereby he tells things to happen and they actually happen. This man wakes up thinking ah, it is just the normal kind of dreams. He doesn't even share it with his wife, but then he decides, I'll put my power into test. As he's sitting in his living room, he decides to command the TV stations to change from one station to another. And as he's doing that, he's just using the power of the mind let the channel change from this channel to another channel. And lo and behold, the channels are changing just by the power of his mind. We are looking at something that we can narrow it down to telepathy. Telepathy, the power of communication, using not the normal media medium of communication, but he is able to do it. This man is now, uh, the man realizes his power that had come to him as a, in a dream is actually a power that is in existence. Now, the first instance, he thinks about putting his power into good use. I can use my power to change my country. That was his initial, uh, that was his, uh, that was what his, he intended to do initially. And then there's a, there's a place that we are being told Al-Mahdi has a conscience. He always talks about heeding to his inner, heeding to his inner voice. In heeding to his inner voice, he also entrusts himself to God before leaving the house. From our analysis of Al-Mahdi initially, the man looks like he is a fine man. He is religious. He is actually moral. Then comes another episode. An episode uh, with a taxi driver. That will become the first episode. How does Al-Mahdi put his power into use? The first instance, he wants to hail a taxi. But then the taxi driver motions to him that he will not actually, uh, he will not pick him up as a client. This sets Al-Mahdi very angry. He becomes very angry and he decides to put his power into use, but this time around, not to uh, do the good that he had intended to do, but he actually uses it to punish. 
he, ex he exacts revenge, revenge on the person because the person had refused to pick him up as a client. What does he do? He uses his power to make this person to encounter an accident. The taxi driver encounters an accident whereby the rear tires both burst and we cannot put into any, uh, we cannot give any logical reason what has actually happened. And when your tire bursts, the man gets out of the car to examine what is going on. And then Al Mahdi, over there uh, looking like he's very hypocritical, he comes over, asks the man, may I be of help? But the man dismisses him. He does not need any help from Al Mahdi. But what is going on in the mind of Al Mahdi? He encounters a satisfaction, a satisfaction that he has taught the man a lesson of importance. That is the first episode he puts his power to. We go ahead. Now the man is exerting his powers. But still, away from, uh, uh, before I can go to another episode, we also see that Al Mahdi at, at, at certain times, he puts his power to good use. He finds that uh, rubbish has been deposited in the wrong place. He uses his power without even maybe bending over or something. He, uh, he gets to dispose the trash in its proper place. Those are, uh, that is one among the examples of the way he has been putting his power into good usage. There's still another incident of how uh, Taib al-Mahdi uses his power. We are having an incident at the bus stop. At the bus stop, al-Mahdi observes a man and a woman. The man and the woman, they are held up in some kind of confrontation. They are arguing, they are in a conflict. And then as he is still observing, the man goes ahead and slaps the woman without even knowing what are these two people arguing about. Al-Mahdi already becomes judgmental. He decides it is the man who is on the wrong. And he decides to punish the man using his power. Therefore, he aims his newly found power on the man's stomach. Using his power, he gazes at the man's stomach and the man develops a severe, a severe kind of a cramp in the stomach. And the cramp does not subside. In fact, with that cramp, Al-Mahdi does not leave the bus stop until an ambulance has come and picked the man. What could have been the level of suffering of this man until he is taken by an ambulance, the man must really have suffered. We are now seeing Al-Mahdi is getting comfortable. He is now playing God. What he feels that should be done is the one that exactly happens. We still go to another episode. We are talking about a man of awesome powers. That is the title of our story. What are these awesome powers? How does he use these powers? Another episode comes in the place uh, of a cafe. Another incident at the cafe. At the cafe, Al-Mahdi settled somewhere in a corner. When he has settled in his corner, he manages, he gets to watch a certain broadcasting over the television. In the broadcasting, the person who's bro the broadcaster is talking about some kind, uh, some expected development in future. And this uh, kind of talk, we are being told, used to excite Al-Mahdi. He used to believe that there will be change in my country. But then he realizes the change never came to be actualized. The change was mere talk and people are not walking their talk. Now that kind of hypocrisy, you are being promised but nothing ever materializes, it gets this man angry. What does he do? At first instance, he's thinking, I can challenge this man. You know, he can use his powers, talk to you. He can even talk to someone, uh, someone who is in the television. He can communicate to such a person. Therefore, his first instance was that. Let me challenge this man and ask him a question that is worthy. How much of development has actually been seen? But then he changes his mind. Instead of challenging the man, putting him to task of on how much of what people are saying has been done. He decides there's another way. He can punish this guy. Therefore, Al-Mahdi decided, uh, therefore, Al-Mahdi decides that he makes the broadcaster to sneeze, thus cutting short his broadcast. Not once did the man sneeze, but the man ended up, anytime he wanted to, like propagate his lies, because according to Al-Mahdi, these are lies. He's telling people lies. This man ends up sneezing, sneezing over and over until he had to cut short his broadcasting and he plays a background music. Therefore, he's not able to continue lying to people over the television. Yeah. That is another way in which Almadi puts his power into practice. 
Anyway, pride comes before fall. Al Mahdi now has been playing God and he's getting comfortable. What I don't like. I don't want people to lie to me. I don't want a man to fight this woman. I do not like the arrogance of the taxi driver. He puts them in their place. Then it happens the last episode of falling. Pride comes before a fall. And the last episode where he exerts his power is at a certain garden. Al Mahdi turns around and he encounters a beautiful woman at a garden. Looking at this story, if I was talking about illusion, I'm looking at the encounter at this garden can be compared to the story of the Garden of Eden, where a man falls at the hands of a woman. This man has been using his power and so far, so good. But then he encounters that beautiful woman and he decides, I can also heal my broken heart. I can also uh, seduce that woman using my power and... That is exactly what he does. He looks at that woman and in his own power he communicates to that woman and the woman also uh, the, the woman also uh, the woman also submits submits to his wishes and together they decide to have a romantic involvement. After that we are seeing that Al Mahdi uh, feels some kind of guilt. You know this is a man he has gone out he has disregarded his religion he has disregarded the wife uh, when he was cheating with that other beautiful woman. When he goes back home, we see that Al Mahdi, the wife, comments, You are not your usual self. Today you're not okay. But the man hides behind the guys that it must be a cold. Uh, yes, I'm agreeing, I'm not okay, but it must be a cold. But then it is his conscience. He forgot about his conscience when he was setting out. He was always listening to his inner voice. But this time round, when he wanted to fall for the sin of the flesh, he disregarded the inner voice and he justified his action. He ended up uh, with that woman they submitted to their lust. He went to the wife. Uh, he went to the wife. He knows that he had made a mistake, but he does not confess to his mistake. He in fact hides behind the fact that it is a cold. After that, you see that Al Mahdi loses his power, and he loses his power. He comes to that realization when he he goes back and tries to go back to the initial. How did it start? It started with commanding the TV. Change channels. This time around, he's trying to command the TV to change channels, but nothing happens. That is when he realizes, sadly, that he had lost his power. And as the story is ending, we are being told, after this incident, Taib loses his power. He ends up sad, and the sadness haunts him up to his last days. In other words, he never regained his power and he died having not regained the power and it is a sad encounter for him. It is almost that like he cannot accept but it has already happened. That is it about a man of awesome power, someone rewarded with a gift. But how does he use his gift? To some extent, he uses the gift to, in doing good. But at this, at another, from another glance, this man decides to play God and he's using He's using his powers to seek vengeance uh, and so on. That is it about a man of awesome powers. Uh, thank you, Teacher Rispa. So you've heard uh, the analysis of the short story, A Man of Awesome Powers. And uh, Teacher Rispa, remember mm -hmm. during the dream, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is a quotation. Uh, mm -hmm. The dream clearly told uh, Taib mm -hmm. Al-Madi that from this moment onward, I'm reading from page one, yes. and for as long as God wills. Mm -hmm. So he knew that these powers were not mm -hmm. permanent. Mm -hmm. He had been given mm -hmm. uh, a timeline. It's okay, mm -hmm. it all isn't like a stated timeline, mm -hmm. but he had been told that at some point, if God decides to take these powers from you, mm -hmm. then he is going to take these powers from you. True. So if he was really a good person, he should have used that time that he had been given the powers mm -hmm. to make good use of the powers mm -hmm. to do good things instead mm -hmm. of just being uh, selfish and mm -hmm. playing God. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can see that uh, he had been warned that for as long as God wills. Mm -hmm. So he knew at some point the powers are going to disappear. Mm -hmm. And so I don't understand why at the end of it all he is so devastated mm -hmm. and uh, he is so desperate and feeling helpless mm -hmm. once he realizes that he no longer has powers. Yet he knew mm -hmm. that at some point God is going to take back the powers. Mm -hmm. In so, my okay, in my opinion about that, mm -hmm. uh, why is he devastated? I'll answer it like this that the man was getting comfortable with power. Oh, you know oh. the way you so he forgot. Uh, yeah. The way you uh you gain power and though you're feeling good as you are living yeah. within that power that is why he's feeling devastated
now mm. he's he's uh, he's adamant to go back to his old yeah. uh, his old life, yes. which was actually full of contentment. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Teacher Rispa. So that's what we have our learners about the analysis of the short story. Um, now I'm going to look at the themes, the issues that are brought out in a short story. So it's important to note that uh, because it's a short story and um, the plot is not uh, as developed as the plot of a novel. Remember our learners that uh, we have just finished analyzing the novel Fathers of Nations. So the plot is not as developed as that of a novel. So we end up with, with very few issues. So you might find that uh, the author of the short story just wanted to bring out one theme or two themes. So uh, I'm going to look at the themes that are brought out in uh, A Man of Awesome Powers. And the first one is misuse, misuse of power or abuse of power. So um, the first point, when Tayyib al-Mahid, I'll refer to him as a Tayyib, uh, but it's the same character. So when Tayyib uh, acquires his awesome powers, he misuses the powers. Uh, the first incident is on his way to the cafe. So on his way to the cafe to have his usual cup of uh, tea, he stops uh, the taxi driver. And the taxi driver uh, signals him that he can't stop and speeds past him. The book tells us that it's not an unusual occurrence. It's something that the taxi drivers do. We don't know the reason why he wasn't in a position to, like, um, uh, stop for Tayyip. We are not told the reason. So maybe it was a uh, lady going for another client. You can't tell. But that angers on that particular day, it angers Tayyip so much and he felt the need to punish this, this tax driver for not stopping for him. So what does he do? Uh, he wills, uh, using his power, he wills the the rear uh, tires of uh, the taxi driver's vehicle to burst and they explode like a bomb. So on his way past the, the taxi driver, we are told that he is uh, feeling enraged, enraged that this person did not stop for him. So as a result, he decides to punish him. So just like teacher is said, Taib is using these powers to be God, to decide the person that, who, that deserves punishment and the person that deserves a reward. So that is one instance where he misuses his power. The second one, Tayyip misuses his power uh, when he encounters a conflict between a man and a woman in the bus. He was not in the bus. He was not there. Actually, the, the, in the story, we are told that he could not, he could not hear what the conflict or the argu uh, argument was about. He just observed them from a distance. And uh, he played God again. He judged outside the bus and he could tell that the man was in the wrong just because the man slapped the woman. Okay, we agree it's wrong, but he was uh, able to judge that the man was in the wrong. Again, he decides to punish the man. He uses his power and wills that uh, the stomach cramps uh, attacks this man. So he gets severe stomach cramps to an extent that the bus could not move. They had to call an ambulance to come and pick this man because it was so severe it became a case of emergency. So that's another place where he misuses his power. This part, some of you might argue that it was good that he punishes the man for slapping the woman because of the gender violence kind of situation. But the question is why could he use his power to will the man to do the right thing of instead of punishing the man. Maybe will the man to be remorseful and maybe apologize to the woman instead of making him suffer from the stomach cramps. Uh, another instance where we have misuse of, of power is uh, where now he decides that he's the one who is going to save the news that the citizens are received. So uh, initially he would listen to such kind of news during the okay, the radio news and the television news, and uh, he would be happy, he would be excited because he would think that for sure they are going to have changes uh, in the future, good changes for the society in the future. But this time round, remember now he has powers, he listens to the announcer and he, uh, he, he says that this announcer is lying to the citizens. He feels like uh, he needs to make him stop. He needs to make him stop uh, announcing lies and maybe willing to tell him the truth. What are these developments? Okay, these developments that he's talking about, have they ever been affected? As in, tell us the truth. But he changes his mind. Instead of doing the right thing and maybe willing the 
announce her to see the truth, mm -hmm. the situation of the country as it was at that particular time, what does he do? He punishes the announcer. Remember, the announcer is just a messenger. Mm -hmm. He is just doing his job. He's, uh, he has been presented with news items that he's supposed to present. So he punishes the announcer. What does he do? He makes him sneeze uncontrollably to the extent that he can no longer speak. And so he has to play uh, some music because the, the, the news, car, the news um, could not continue. Again, let alone, every time we would watch TV or you would listen to the radio and feel that that was not the information that he considers right mm -hmm. for the citizens to listen to, he would always punish the announcer. Sometimes it would make them uh, emit trills, like, uh, like those of women, trills of women in the middle of the, the, the broadcasting. Sometimes it would even uh, make them suffer from uncontrollable diarrhea in the middle of uh, the, announce, uh, the broadcasting so that he can be able to receive the news. So that was another instance where he, uh, he misuses power. Uh, the last instance where he misuses power is now when he wills a beautiful uh, young girl to fall in love with him. He says that uh, she made, just by looking at him, she made him feel things that he has even never felt, even with his wife. So he says, why can't he, for once, use the powers for his own benefit? He can't always be using the powers to benefit the society. So this time he tries to show his selfishness and uh, he wills that girl to look at him and fall in love with him. And that is exactly what happens. The girl looks at him and falls in love with him. So he does not ask himself after the incident, what will this girl feel? That now she went uh, and fell in love with a stranger for no reason because it was not actually something that she did willingly. Mm -hmm. she, it, she was like in a, in a daze. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what she was doing. Theme number two is, uh, so that was about abuse of power. The theme number two that is brought out is the effects of power. If I'm, I'm trying to explain what this means, the difference between abuse and effects. If, for example, you have been given powers right now, what would these powers do to you as a person? How would these powers affect you as a person? So those are the effects of power. The first one, power changes type and make him a vengeful person. So uh, we are told this, like for the taxi driver incident, it was a usual occurrence. It used to happen to him, not once, not twice. But now because he has power, he becomes vengeful and he decides, you're not stopping for me, then I'll make you, I'll make you stop by force. Mm -hmm. Also, powers, the second point, powers make uh, Taib uh, selfish. Uh, for the case of uh, Suleiman, uh, Suleiman and the bus, uh, the bus, the bus, the bus situation. Eh? We are told after he makes the man, the man um, suffer from stomach cramps. There is a way he feels satisfaction. He is excited that he has been able to punish uh, the man. Also, Suleiman, the man who uh, stay, uh, did not pay taxes, after making him confess, he is very happy. He says that tomorrow he is now waiting for the news. For the new breaking news because you know Suleiman will be on the end lines and exposed. So he's happy, uh, he drives uh, self satisfaction from hurting people. That makes him selfish. So uh, power also make corrupt his morals. We are told that uh, at the beginning, Tayyip was a contented man. He would watch television with his, TV, his wife. Uh, he would just sit and read newspapers. It's like he was content just spending his retirement inch with his wife. But now, and he would also watch or listen to the radio stations uh, that were uh, committed to the Quran. So now power changes him. That incident about that young girl, it corrupts his morals. He forgets about his faith. He forgets about his duty to his wife as a husband. So what does he do? He wills another a girl to love him. And uh, in the process, he commits uh, adultery and he also uh, betrays his uh, religion. Um, also, power makes Tayyip uh, a very emotional person. We are told that uh, he would see things and he would become enraged. He was able, to, he was unable to control his emotions. He was unable to control his uh, rage. 
For example, the taxi driver's incident, we are told that he was, he was uh, so furious, he was so enraged that at the end of it all, he felt that the taxi driver deserved that kind of harsh uh, punishment. Mm -hmm. Thing number two is hypocrisy. For hypocrisy, we only have two. Thing number three, sorry, we only have two points. Uh, one, uh, after busting the tires of the taxi driver, uh, he walks past him and asks him if he can be of any help. Imagine, you have caused this damage and yet you're there offering your help. Uh, but when the taxi driver says that he's okay, he walks away feeling satisfied that uh, he has done his duty as uh, the God he was blamed uh, to be. The second case of hypocrisy is when he goes back after committing adultery, he goes back to his wife and his wife observes that he was not looking okay. There was something off with him. But when uh, she asks him, he lies that he was just uh, having a court. He does not say the truth that he was now feeling guilty uh, for having gone against the faith and also uh, broken their uh, vows. Uh, the last one is responsibilities that come about as a result of power. So responsibilities of power, that is the theme number four. So when uh, someone gives you power, then power comes with responsibilities. There are expectations that uh, you're supposed to meet for having uh, power. So the first one is making the society better. Uh, Tayyip tried to do that because uh, apart from doing bad things or misusing power, he also did some also good uh, deeds. For example, um, he stumbled on a pile of rubbish and uh, using his power, he collected it. Uh, he saw a blocked sewer and using his power, he drained it. Also, um, he used his power, the second point, to put people into task. The case of Suleiman. Suleiman was someone who was staying away from paying taxes. He did not meet his responsibilities as a citizen of that country. So he wills him to go and confess and pay what he owned uh, the country. Uh, and the last point is correcting wrongs in the society. He uses his power to correct wrongs in the society, though in not a very good way, uh, he uses power to make sure that the announcers don't uh, broadcast lies to the citizens. So that's what we have for today, our students. Uh, we have covered the analysis of the story, A Man of Awesome Powers, and we, are, we have looked at the issues that have been developed in that short story. So uh, we end our session today uh, now, and uh, stay tuned for the next session on how to tackle sample essay questions uh, from the story, A Man of Awesome Powers. Until next time, bye-bye.